Welcome back everybody. If you are new to our channel, this is Tom and I'm Mike and today we're taking you along for a ride. Um, although we packed up the car, it might look like we're going on vacation. We sort of are, but we're actually going somewhere a little bit more special today. Tom, where are we headed? We're finally picking up our new uh, camper van, uh, which we ordered 11 months ago. But due to the pandemic and all the issues, supply chain issues, uh, we're finally able to pick it up today. We actually got pretty lucky that the RV center is only 35 miles from our house. A lot of times when you buy a new RV or camper van in, in our sort of sense, um, they'll fly you in to pick up the van. So we didn't have to do that, made it a little bit easier on our part, saved a little bit of money, but we should be arriving there pretty soon. So we're gonna take you along with us as we pick up the van. Look at her, isn't she a beauty? But that's not ours. Ours is a little bit smaller. We're gonna see it in a minute. I think it's in the showroom, but I think we're gonna to have to sign some paperwork first. So let's go ahead and head on in. All right, so it's been a couple of hours. When we first got here, we were shown into the van. We got an orientation tour that took us about an hour. Of course, we have seen lots of videos in the year it's taken us to get the van, so we kind of knew how everything worked already. So it's a bit abbreviated, I think. But after that, um, they had a little bit of technical difficulties. So we went to lunch, we came back, we signed our life away. This baby is now officially ours. So let's go inside, show you around. This is a 2022 Coachman Beyond 22 rear bath with uh, all-wheel drive and EcoBoost. So what all that means is it's based on the Ford Transit chassis. And you can see the dashboard of the Ford Transit looks a lot like just a regular car chassis, which is one of the things we liked. It also has plenty of leg room. Mike is very tall, uh, and that was important to us. It has the EcoBoost engine, which is a lot more power than the other options like the Ram Promaster and the Mercedes Sprinter van. Uh, the other thing it has all wheel drive, which you know for us was kind of important because we plan to take it to Illinois and places where it could be snowy. You know, combined with the additional horsepower, we'll make sure we won't get stuck on any like dirt roads or anything like that. So you can see the controls are mostly hidden behind this panel and it's all um, in this Firefly control, which is very common across all of your vans. This, you know, can control all our lighting, our awnings. It shows our tank levels. The two batteries of the, the coach are more information on the battery. Uh, and this is the climate control where we can set the air conditioner or the heater. And then next to it is the Truma panel. And the Truma is a combination water heater and air heater, you know, for the cabin. And right now it's doing a bunch of different things, but you, you know, you can go through all the menus and see all the different settings. Above that are some switches. You can see here the tank heater switch for the gray tank. And the gray tank is the only tank that's outside the cabin. So that's the only one we have to worry about if it ever gets cold below freezing. And the gray tank does have a tank heater, which we can turn on by that switch there. The Wi-Fi is the Wi-Fi booster. You can turn on off from here. And the LP tank, you know, is the liquid propane. And this is the main disconnect for the whole coach battery. 
the house battery. And there are a couple other panels here. Um, we, we did get the lithium option and it replaces the generator. So it uses the main engine and the generator and it stores power in the lithium battery. And it will allow us to run the air conditioner without being plugged in or without having the engine on or any kind of generator. And these other three uh, switches and panels, this is the switch for the solar, uh, the solar panels on the roof. It comes with, I think, a 190 watt single flexible solar panel. And they told us, you know, during our, our overview to just leave it on. Next to that is the uh, Xantrex inverter. Right now, uh, I'm not sure what it's doing. We're plugged in. I think it's just inverting the power or charging. I don't know what. But I didn't read the manual yet, so I don't know really how to, how to work it. Um, but there, it's Bluetooth compatible, and there's an app, and it you know, basically shows the same display in the app. And then this other panel is the solar controller. Basically, it takes the solar power and um, puts it into the battery, and this display shows how full the battery is and the different modes that it's, uh, that it's doing, and then uh, how, you know, how many volts are in the battery. So below the panels, we have our main uh, screen door, uh, the slider on the outside, and the screen door on the inside. And one thing that's unique, um, pretty unique, that we haven't seen in, in very many other uh, Class B vans is this more rigid looking kind of um, uh, screen that looks kind of like you see it at home. All the other vans have a roll up thing um, that looks kind of like a tent fabric. And it doesn't look very residential to me, um, but I did like this, this slider. We'll see how it works. You know, some people have issues with it. So going to the uh, little tiny kitchenette, we'll call it a little kitchenette because it's super tiny. Uh, we have a single burner induction cooktop that I can't wait to try that. Below that we have a drawer. Uh, it's a full extension drawer. And one thing about Coachman that I liked, um, you don't see any of these, these, the hardware. Uh, also the door, the drawer um, are all built with real dovetails and solid wood, where a lot of the other ones are particle board and stapled together with staples instead of screws. Below that we have our Nova Cool refrigerator and it's very tiny. We'll see how much food we get in there, but it does go pretty deep right there and it has a little tiny um, freezer. And on the other side we have our sink. I'm not sure. It's a, it's a round sink and it looks pretty small, but this whole van's pretty small. Below that we have a little tip out drawer, which is neat for sponges and knives or whatever you want to put. And then below that we have the a built-in uh, area for the trash. I'm not sure we'll keep that there. We might use it for storage. And then a large, uh, two large drawers down here. On the other side here, we have the microwave and two drawers below that. Uh, it's also just a regular, it's just a regular microwave, not a convection microwave. In the front we have a table and this pole screws down to the floor and we can attach the tabletop just stored behind the counter to here. Oop, the chairs are in the way. I can't show you because the chairs are in the way. But the chairs can swivel out of the way and we can place the table right here. Um, to, sit, to use the front as a lounge area to eat or whatever we want. So the other table in the van is this uh, lagoon table. And the thing about the lagoon table is that, you know, you can swivel it in many different directions. Um, you can use these knobs to tighten it or loosen it and lock it into place. Uh, the one issue I think we'll find is that there's no dedicated place to put this table if we're not using it. So we can detach it and it can collapse into three pieces, um, but we'll need to find a place to, to put that. The big thing for us that, uh, that drew us to this layout was that it has two fixed, they call them twin beds, but they're really, really narrow uh, twin beds. And by having the two beds here, it allows a very open space on both sides with the windows. And then the bathroom is in the back. Uh, so. You know, we're, we're, the way we travel is we go out all day to theme parks or to a national park or something, and we only use the van to crash and sleep at night. Uh, so having fixed beds um, will be very good for us. Also, Mike is very tall. These were the only beds that, you know, this layout was the only layout that would work for him. 
Uh, Mike is six foot three inches tall and he just barely fits in here. So there's another um, van called the Travado, which is the most popular van that has a longer sleeping area, an 80 inch bed, but that's on the Ram ProMaster and we just, you know, he doesn't fit in the front in the driver's seat. The ProMaster is just not as powerful and doesn't have all wheel drive. So those are kind of big features that we wanted. The other reason we like this layout is for the rear bathroom. So the rear bath actually, um, you know, is is pretty spacious for a tiny little van. And Mike can uh, stand up in here almost, right, pretty much, uh, with his head very close to the, to the roof. Um, so we do have a, a porcelain toilet uh, and a little flip down sink right here. And then there's a little tiny medicine cabinet that has a flip up mirror and I'm assuming all our stuff will fall out when we're driving. So we'll, we'll find that out. One handy thing in the van is the hanging closet. So there is a hanging rod and some shelves that are adjustable. We'll open the other one here. And then below that are a couple drawers that pull out almost all the way for lots of, lots of storage like that. Unlike other vans, the door to this bathroom is a slider like this, and it's, it's flexible, but I like it. I think uh, compared to the Travado that we looked at, it doesn't have the rigid doors, so this shouldn't rattle when we're driving. So back in the, uh, in the coach, we can open up all of these storage bins, and what's nice is they're lined with uh, felt, and they're, they have a little, they have some LED lighting. So in the last bin is um, what they call is a Jensen CD um, DVD player that connects to the television, which is a 24 inch LG smart TV. And this television is 12, uh, 12 volt. It can swivel out so we can watch it in the middle. It can also be detached from here and be mounted on the side of the, um, on the, side of the van by the door. Here's the screen door again. It covers very nicely. There's um, two grab handles when you're going into the coach. That's very handy, I think, especially for older people. Um, there's a little light here. It's a motion light, motion activated. And you can see that these are the two, or this is the mount for the television we saw inside with a port for your cable TV if you're at a campsite with cable TV. And you see above is the retractable, uh, big retractable awning. It's uh, you know, it doesn't have any poles and does have LEDs built into it. So outside, this is the exhaust port for the Truma uh, hot water heater and furnace. And we do have a, uh, two um, electrical outlets if we want to plug in our grill or whatever electric, uh, you know, other electrical things uh, in the back. And talking about the back, we'll open up the back doors. And uh, so the, the doors can stop like this. You can also release the door and it can go all the way around and magnetically attach to the car, uh, to the body, without you know scraping anything out the back. On other vans, with the rear bath layout, it's totally exposed. So when you open the, the rear, you see the toilet. But with Coachman, they built these uh, storage cubbies um, where we can store you know our different hoses, you know within these things. Within the space of the of the door. We do have a sliding uh, screen and that magnetically attaches to the floor. This will let us, you know, keep the door open without bugs flying in uh, at a campsite or when we are when we're at the beach. One thing that we did order was the um, a specialty uh, insulated ABS molded door. And because of COVID and part shortages, they said they didn't have the ABS plastic. And it was a pretty expensive option, but it, cleaned, it would have cleaned up this look and, and more, uh, better insulate the door panel itself. So maybe in the future, uh, we'll be able to retrofit that or uh, take it apart and insulate it ourselves behind the door. So on this side, um, we have the smart plug, which is the newer design plugs for RVs that are watertight and just plug in with these two uh, little release levers here instead of the old screw-in type. So here we have the city water connection that when you hook up your hose, it, it uses the pressure right into the faucets and the shower. 
Uh, below that we have the fresh water connection and this is where you fill the fresh water tank in the van. Next to that we have the black tank flush. So the black tank is where you know all of the sewage water gets stored and the flush while you're dumping that tank cleans out the, uh, the insides. And above that is the cable TV connection. So if you're at a camp, campground with a cable with cable TV, you'll be able to hook it up to your to the television. So back here is the um, is the black tank connector where we would dump the water from the toilet. And then next to that is storage for the uh, the hose for that called the uh, stinky slinky. Mm -hmm. That'll be fun. And then next to that is the um, is the cover for the propane. The propane connections. Oop. Okay. So we have the propane on off switch. Um, we have the propane fill and we have the um, the pressure relief valve. And right here is the connector if we wanted to hook up a propane grill um, to run off the main tanks of the of the coach. Further down this little port is for sol uh, additional solar panels if you wanted to attach the exterior solar panel to help our battery. And next to that is the exterior shower port, so or the, ho uh, the hose that goes into the, into the port. It's only cold water, so I'm not sure we'll ever use that. On the driver's door, we have, this is the gas tank cover, um, and you need to open the door to be able to open the gas tank, but it's right there. There isn't a cap, like a lot of new Ford uh, vehicles, you just put the nozzle into there. But this will be fun for us because we haven't had a gas car. Uh, we've had several electric cars since 2013. So this is this will be a new experience for us. Um, above that, which I find very handy, or we will find very handy, is the touch pad to um, remotely unlock the door. So we could leave all our keys inside the van, lock it, go swimming, go to the beach or whatever, and not have to bring our keys with us. So that'll be fun, handy. Okay, I guess that's it for this part of the tour. Time to move in. We've had a bunch of stuff collected, ready to go. So we've got ourselves unpacked and we are ready for a good first night in the van, but unfortunately nothing ever works out quite that easy. We were planning to stay the night here at the RV dealer, which is pretty typical for uh, new purchases. They let you stay overnight, explore the van, test everything out, make sure it all works, and anything that doesn't, they could address right away. But unfortunately, the one day a year that it snows in Atlanta is going to be this evening. <laughs> so we are going to make our escape before we get snowed in and then have to spend the night in here. Um, so that's going to do it for this video, but make sure that you stay tuned. We'll explore the van a little bit further uh, as we go along, take you on some trips with us to some fun and exciting places and, and seek out fun adventure. Before we leave, we did want to send a big thank you to all of our patrons who help support the channel. If you are interested in joining our Patreon team, be sure to check out the links in the description below. Till next time, thanks for watching everyone, take care, and happy travels. travels.